Welcome to the Curiosity Chamber. It is midnight, and Daddy got into Grandpa's liquor cabinet. I did not. No, I did not. Um, I should. I should. I might. Maybe this weekend I will. Maybe this weekend I'll get a little, uh, little tipsy there. Um, damn, I don't even know where to start today, man. Maybe I'll start by saying that, uh, that we'll start calling this the Midnight Club for all the boys and girls and you children. And, uh, Jasper's got a little, uh, little story. So children gather around, gather around close to your phones, your earbuds, your iPods, iPads, whatever the hell you have out, your PCs, your disc men, walk men, whatever you're using, tape recorder tape cassette if you're in your car listen up so uh this thing keeps playing over and over in my head and i don't know where it came from but what keeps repeating in my head is i quit my life so that i can have a job See if that resonates a little bit. Try to see what I mean. Like, try to dig deep and, and really understand what I mean. I quit my life so I can have a job. Okay. Everyone before they had a job. Mo- okay, not everyone. Most people, all right? You can never say everyone. Most people had aspirations, had dreams had motivation to really do something that is the complete opposite of probably what they're doing right now just to get a paycheck. Right? Do I still have you? Is this making making some uh making something resonate a little bit? I quit my life to have a job. Um, I got I got let go of my job today. Just a few hours ago. At 11 a.m. Central Time. I got let go of my job. And I've been here for two years. And I was performing very well. I was a, I was a top performer. I was never... Under any, I don't know, impression, I guess, that I wasn't ever behind the eight ball. Meaning, I was always performing what I was supposed to be performing. Never once did I have a conversation with my manager saying that I'm underperforming. Um, we have a dashboard because I'm in sales. We have a dashboard so you can literally literally see in real time what your what your metrics are, you know? So, I mean, it keeps you honest. And I was never falling behind. Um, I was doing good, all right? And so this comes as a complete shock to me that I got let go from my job today. And it was a very, very comfortable job. I was making very good money. I had flexibility. I was trusted, which is awesome. And I had a lot of time to spend. Um, I had a lot of time to spend with my kid during work hours almost. So like he can come over because I work remotely and I can watch him while he like watch his TV and he can come hang out a little bit, you know, because I was on a quarterly, um, a quarterly quota. I had a certain number to hit in three months and they did a really good job. The company of not micromanaging, but like they can always see if you're on track, right? And listen, a lot of us give up so much shit. A lot of us give up so many dreams, okay, to work for a corporation 
and every corporation says the same thing. You're we're family, right? <laughs> we're family. And they just they'll constantly feed you the bullshit to get you feeling comfortable, I guess, but not too comfortable, but comfortable enough. All right. So you stick around and keep, keep getting that paycheck. All right. Knowing that if you think you have job security, that you'll probably go out and go get more debt. So now you really have to have this job and there's no way that you're going to leave this job. Right, because you're just consuming more debt. The longer you're at a place, that's just natural. That's just what humans do, right? You feel a sense of security. You feel like you're always going to get that raise. Like you're doing well, so of course you're going to get a raise. Why don't you go ahead and buy that new car? Go buy that boat. Even working your ass off, go upgrade your house. Go live in in a better apartment. You know, go buy those clothes. Go take out another credit card. Yada 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 yada. Right. Go put your kid in that uh that better school, right? That have that has raving reviews. It's crazy, man. And I've been I've been through this before. I've been laid off before, but years ago. I'm 35 now and I thought I was past this you know that stage i guess like i really thought this was it and i had a a stable set career that's how i was made to feel i was made to feel like that the people i worked with were awesome they were great they were wonderful people the team that i worked with oh my god man it was so cool they were just like me In a lot of ways, you know, they're around my age and they were professional. They know they, they know they had to get shit done, you know, and we would always bounce ideas off each other. And after work, sometimes, you know, we would talk on the phone or text message and bullshit and have some fun. Right. You quit your life. So you can work. So you can have a job. There was a point that came up while I was working at this company that they found my podcast. This podcast is very podcast that you're listening to. And I was kind of reprimanded for it, saying that you have to divorce this podcast from any prospects that can potentially see it, you know, something, something along those lines that no prospect should be able to see this podcast, see or hear this podcast. Like there can be no relations. I have to divorce myself from this podcast if I want to, continue working at ACI that wasn't verbatim but that's kind of like how it was presented to me I guess right I do this podcast after work after work hours I do this podcast this podcast to me I grew this goddamn thing from nothing this started From me picking up a microphone because I heard a podcast in like, I think it was like 2015 or something. And it was called Serial, Serial Podcast. And this this woman did such a wonderful job trying to, in real time, um, like investigate a murder that took place and the dude was still in prison and she was trying to dig up facts saying that he was innocent because he was claiming that he was innocent. So she did a wonderful job doing this podcast and I just fell in love with it from that moment. I wanted to hear every episode right away. That's what got me into podcasting. Shout out to Serial. 
wonderful. So they wanted me to divorce myself from this podcast. I thought a corporation was not supposed to care about what you do in your free time. When you're not clocked in, you should be able to do whatever you please. And this for me is an outlet. This podcast is a complete outlet for me. And the funny, like, it's just so goddamn funny to me, man. They wanted me to quit this podcast. And what my rebuttal was, I didn't say this to them. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll take it off LinkedIn. That I'll do. I'm not quitting my podcast, though. I love my podcast. I can't do that. So we met in the middle. My rebuttal, and I, I talked to my friends about this like over and over and over again. Like this, like this situation made me snap. So thank you if you were one of the people that listened to me. Why the fuck should I give up my podcast when a corporation would have they would not bat an eye. Like they would drop me like a bad habit, ironically, if their stock went down two points. You know what I mean? Like if they weren't on track to to go up six percent when they you know, when they told investors that they were gonna go up seven percent, I guess. It's like that one percent and you're gonna start laying off people. People with families, people, it's just like, you know, you know, dude, you've seen my undercover boss. People have fucking lives, dude. And there's this real disconnection and dehumanization when it comes to corporations. Something is so cold and I'm using a word that my buddy Ali used. It's, there's a, it's something so cold. Business is cold. It's fucking cold-blooded, dude. And apparently in their eyes, the corporation's eyes, like two two more paychecks is sufficient enough for someone with a with a kid who who like did did numbers at this place. I came on and I didn't I didn't slow down from the moment I I started at this place. And whatever was asked of me, I did travel, work extra hours, teach people shit, do presentations, you know? And I've it's 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 weird, man, cuz I've always had this inclination about corporations. Always. For this fucking exact moment that is happening right now. And I know I'm not the only one this happens to. Trust me. I know that. Unfortunately, it happens a lot. Unfortunately, sometimes it's it's too much for people. And they don't see themselves able to, um, to rebuild, I guess. You know, they don't want to start over, so they just, they end it. They end their life because of a situation like this. However, I've never been that type of person. And I'm not that type of person. I, dude, but like, from the outside, I come up, I completely understand this. People see me and probably see like I have this cookie cutter fucking life. Oh, you're a white kid, blonde hair, blue eyes. You probably had a perfect life. You were born with a fucking 700 credit score. No, go fuck yourself. Complete opposite of that shit. If you were to do like a fucking blindfold and just look and just read about my past without having looking at me physically... You you would have no idea how the fuck I got here. You would have no fucking idea how the fuck I got here. I had to dig my way out so many fucking times, dude. And I believe I, I've just become so fucking battle-hardened that this shit, getting laid off, knowing I have a fucking pretty expensive 
life to maintain on top of having a fucking child, paying child support, putting him through school, and everything else that goes with having a kid through a divorce, okay? You want to talk about some stressors? That is some stressors, but it doesn't fucking get to me, man. It doesn't. Because I am so battle-hardened from what my life has thrown me since I have been fucking a little child, man. This is nothing to me. This is fucking nothing to me. I see this as a fucking opportunity, man. Doors are opening. Doors will open. You think you're going to get fucking rid of me, man? The only, the only thing that will crumble me is if I lose my child or if I fucking die. That is the only way that you will see Jay Baroni's life crumble. A fucking job? Come on, man. I can find a fucking other job. Okay? That's the type of person I am. I'm going to regrow from this. I'll develop my skills even more. Like, dude, I'm fucking so hungry right now. You got re- you fucking let me go? Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Wait. Watch. Watch. Watch what the fuck happens. I've been through this shit before, man. Yeah. If you dwell on it, you can, you can take two paths, man. You can fucking spiral out of control, or you can do something about it and grab the fucking bull by the horns and see this as, as an opportunity. Right? Realistically, I probably have two months off. I have enough money saved up where I can take two months off. What the fuck do you think I'm going to do in that two months? Do you think I'm just going to fucking sleep all day? Sleep all day, play Xbox? No. No, 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 no. What I'm going to do is I'm going to chase the fuck out of my dreams right now while I have this small window of opportunity. Because otherwise, I just got sucked up into the corporate world where I quit my life so I can have a job. No, 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 no. So I'm taking fucking advantage of this situation right now. You let me go? Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Now I have an opportunity to see something that I've always wanted to seize. So I'm going to go out and try my fucking best to do it. And if I fail, who gives a shit, man? Do you think life is permanent? Life is not permanent. No one makes it out alive. If you think you're going to live till you're fucking a thousand, you're whacked. No one makes it out alive. I do not let my job, my professional career, define me as a person, okay? I know a lot of people hide behind their fucking, their title at their job. And if that makes you, that's cool. That's fine. But guess what? Nothing lasts forever, dude, okay? Make an impact. Be be a fucking good person. Be who you are. Be genuine. Be nice. Be who the fuck you were born to be, dude. Stop hiding behind shit. Stop hiding behind your fancy fucking cars. You know? Because you're so scared that someone might see who you really are. There's so much ego and facade that's that's going on in this fucking world right now. It's disgusting. I don't know who anybody is anymore. I really fucking don't. Everyone's clout chasing. Saying saying like key phrases or words that you don't even fucking know what means. Just like dumbass slang. So you can try and fit in with people you don't even fucking like. And then you're throwing on social media. You know, just like pictures of shit that you probably don't even fucking like, dude. You don't like it yourself. But you know it's it's going to get some likes and reactions. You know? And you just... Post it out there. Who are you? I know who the fuck I am. I know exactly who I am. And that's comforting to me. That's enough for me, man. That is enough for me. Unfortunately, we live in a society where you need money to survive. I will find money, okay? I would rather, I would much rather do it in an artistic way, in a way that I 
appreciate in a way that that fulfills me instead of working for a corporation that wants you to quit your hobby because of the way it might be represented on your behalf but has no problem firing you and basically changing the course of your life to save a percentage so the C level executives can get a, a bigger bonus or the the investors can make you know a couple million dollars more you have no problem throwing you know a, a fucking Darren who's been working at this corporation or Daryl you know working at a corporation for 25 plus years and you just canned his ass and he has to start all over again knowing he has a fucking difficult life okay knowing that you know a little bit about his uh his personal life the managers the upper levels have no fucking idea they just see you as a number yeah cut cut 30 of them cut 30 of them why don't you go meet 30 of them. Why don't you go meet fucking one of them? You know? Just go meet one of them. Go spend a day with them. Go to the bar with them or something, man. Go meet their family. And then see if you want to start making cuts. You're all you're all pussies, dude. They're all pussies. It's the same way that goes down with the military shit, too. Sending our troops overseas. While, while the fucking... The generals or the, the politicians stay in a goddamn office with air conditioning or heat. Yeah, push uh, 25,000 of them over to Ukraine. Why the fuck? Are, why, why are we anywhere right now? Bring the boys and girls back home. Everyone just sees this as a number, man. They're playing games. It's a game to them. It's a fucking game to them. Just a number. You're not a person. You're just a number. Wild. Wild shit. We're slaves to to a salary. That's what it is. Crazy. Funny too. Corporations expect you to give a a two week notice before you you can leave. Otherwise, you burn bridges. You know. But God forbid they do the the exact opposite thing. They'll fire you. This was a complete shock to me. I had no idea. There were zero indications that I was going to get let go. Zero. Because I have a weekly meeting. With my manager. And it was during that meeting. That an HR person. Snuck in. And that's when it took place. I had zero indication. This was going to happen. Just. I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm emotional right now. Because it's a. It's a big change. In my life. You know there's a. There's a family that relies on me, I suppose. Or a child, not a family, a child. And, you know, it's a, it's a big event in one's life when they get let go or fired. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm running on emotion right now. And maybe after a couple days... It'll it'll calm down and cool down, but I've always looked at it at life from like a a ten thousand mile view. Like this is a hiccup, it's a hiccup in the grand scheme of one's life. Like the expectancy is what eighty years old. Maybe for me, 45, I don't know, I live dangerously. But a normal person, 80 years old, I'm 35. It's a blip. 
It's a blip. It's nothing. So, obviously, I, I will overcome this. Um, but it's just, I, I've, and if you listen to this podcast, man, you've always known that I've had such a, a bad taste about corporations. And I hate the fact that I fucking have to work for one. I don't right now, but I, like, if I do fail in this pursuit of entertainment, what I would love to do for money, then I'm going to have to unfortunately go back to a corporation. So I, it's, it sounds condescending and it sounds like contradicting, I guess, because I, I talk shit about corporations and ultimately I'm probably going to, I might have to work for one again. That's the backup plan. It's just a weird situation, dude. I don't think people are supposed to live like this. I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you think about the corporate world? I just hate that they fill your ass up. They fill, <laughs> fill your ass up, huh? What kind of job are you working at? They fill your ear up with so much bullshit that makes you believe that you have job security, right? And that you're more than just a number, but ultimately, like, dude, they threw around, there's such, it's such a conniving, like, backstabbing, I don't even know, it's not an industry. Like, what's a corporation? Entity? A conniving, backstabbing entity that owns the world, essentially? And only the top, top percent, probably, like well off, you know, even if they do get laid off, they're still going to get hit with those bonuses for millions of dollars. And they got stock options and shit, but just like the, the average Joe, the regular guy or gal, you know, what do we get? We don't get shit. <laughs> and we have to put our fucking life on hold or quit your life so you can have a job. That's why I was bringing that up at the very beginning. I quit my life so I can have a job. So if you're able to do something to get out of that world, I I fucking highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. Cuz all nothing is safe, man. I really thought I was I was set in stone. Like this shit just happened out of nowhere. And the economy is in such a shit place right now, like everything just seems uncertain. This is that midnight rant. That midnight juju. 1, 2, 3, 4 a.m. is the time. And I'm going to release this. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll release it right away. I was going to wait till tomorrow at 7, but I think I'll release it today, like right after this. I got let go from my job today. You know, what? what, kind, what type of shit goes through your mind? When you get let go from a job. Have you been let go from a job? And I mean like. In your adult years. I like. Because when you're young. You can still. Get away with it. Like very easily. If you get let go. Sure it might be like. Disheartening the first time you go through it. And like a lot of emotion might come out. Because a lot of people don't like to fail. But. As you move forward in life you'll find out that failure is a part of life a giant part of life and there's no way out of that there's zero way out of it so you better get some thick skin young man young lady because it's going to happen and i guess my advice to you since i've been through so much failure is that if you're positive if you're optimistic listen man opportunities they will come they will come. They, they will be better opportunities. The reason why I got this job in the first place is because something ended. Something has to end in order for something to begin. Okay? That's just the way it works. 
So you like be be upset, be emotional for like 48 hours if you must, but just understand it's going to get better. It's going to get better. No one gets out of this fucking life alive, man. Like to me, this shit is it's almost exciting. Because I don't know I don't know where my life is gonna go right now. I don't see that as fearful. I see it as exciting. I don't know, maybe I'm fucking crazy. But I'm excited. I got let go of my job today and I feel excited because I don't know where my life is going to go. That's how fucking optimistic I am. Cause something always happens. And I'm I'm curious to see about the new people I meet, the new uh the new people I network with, the new job that I'm going to have. If something does happen with this entertainment shit, that would be fire, right? I don't ever use that word, but it would be. Why not? So we'll see. I got a good support system too, so thank you for everyone who uh, who was listening and you know, telling me things are going to be okay. You're right. Things are going to be okay. Definitely. And... um you guys supported this podcast. That's sweet of you. Uh, just know that I am going through some things right now. All right? But we're going to be okay. We'll come out better on the other side. And um, we got some interviews coming up too. I got I got like five lined up. They're going to be they're going to be real good. Got one tomorrow. I got one uh Wednesday next Thursday and Saturday. So we got we got these interviews lined up. Um I'll sprinkle in some solos if you guys like it. I like it, so I'm going to do it because I love it. It's therapy session baby and I'm like just to be upfront, I am sorry that I'm going to be talking about me getting let go a lot because these new people that are going to come on for an interview They don't know that I got let go and it's a fucking huge deal. It's a big, it's a big deal in my life. And each person is going to have a different perspective. So I'm going to bring it up to each and every one of them. And, you know, just because dude, I think you should do that within your own personal life too. If you're listening just to get more perspective, right? Cause you might not be right. If you're the only person you're consulting or your best friend, Sure, your best friend's word might mean more, but just just get more options. Hear more words from, from different people who've had different walks of life. And then with that data compiled, make your own decision. You know? No one knows you as better as you know you. Okay? You guys are lovely. I love you guys. Um, I'm not quitting this podcast. You can fire me. You can fucking cut off my leg. You can give me kisses. Kisses are nice. You can kiss me. I'm not going to fucking quit this. So, um, I appreciate you guys. Thank you very much for being here. Um, more than ever, really, because you guys are stable that listen to this. You guys are like a rock. And, um, sometimes even though a corporation or your job may seem like the most important thing in your life, just because it allows you to maintain your life, I guess, sometimes that's not the most important thing. I know it seems like it. I know it seems like it, but God damn, dude, like health friends, good conversation, real conversations, people that'll have your back no matter what. That's the most important shit. That really is. Corporations will leave you. Your friends, your loves, they will not. They will not leave you. So I leave you with that. And, um, Thank you very much for listening to this. We'll be on um, with a guest tomorrow, and I'll probably post that next week, maybe this weekend. Um, Keep me in your prayers. (laughs) I love you guys. Stay good, all right? Peace out.